Yo, what's good? I'm going to play a, lo a little bit of music just to get the party started. Um, just give a couple of minutes for people to get in. But in the meanwhile, uh, yeah, this is your boy Vixen J with another episode of Sophisticated Ignorance. Live on IG, that is. And whew, do we have some announcements. I am feeling good. I'm looking good. You know what I mean? All that. Um, I have my drink of choice, some cranberry and whiskey uh, for <laughs> today's conversation. Uh, yeah, it's it's about to be quite quite the show today. Quite a fun show. How's everybody doing? How's everybody feeling? I just feel like playing a quick little track uh, just to get the party started. Um, it kind of ties into one of the topics that we're going to be talking about today. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much dope in itself. So, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I want to play this one track. Everyone knows this. Right, let's just get to the main part. This is, this is the jam. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Okay, you know, whatever. The point is Beyonce. We're going to be talking some Beyonce today, but that's neither here nor there. Hey, everybody, what's Gucci? Glad you guys could come through. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to get all producer shit with it, but yeah, that's not going to work out. <laughs> but yes, anyway, so today we have so much things to talk about, so many things to announce. First and foremost, uh, I just want to talk about, or I just want to remind everybody that the live show uh, for the four-year anniversary of this podcast is happening in September. September 5th, uh, live anniversary show happening. You could check the link in the bio on IG for tickets. Free event. Free. F-R-E-E. -E, absolutely free. So uh, come through. Uh, it's all going to be on Zoom. So there's no excuses. It's not like you have to live in New York City to come through. It's not that type of party. There's going to be no mask involved. You could come through. It's on Zoom. It's going to be in a month's time. I still have a lot of planning for that event. So I hope you guys can make it. Uh, you know, I don't, I mean, it's supposed to be Labor Day that weekend. And I don't know if people have travel plans. But if you don't have travel plans and you can spare an hour and a half of your life, <laughs> then you should definitely buy a ticket. Uh, the tickets, once again, are in the link in the bio. And you can check it out. And yes, yeah, secure your seat in what should be a dope event. I have a lot of dope things planned. So that's first and foremost. There's so much more things to talk about that's happened this week, uh, in this past week. Oh, man, where do we begin? Um, you know what? Let's dive into uh, Black is King. I think by now everyone should have seen it. If you have seen it, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, which is kind of weird if you don't, but Beyonce came out with a visual album. It is a visual album for her uh, album that she came out with called The Gift. Uh, That's you know, based on the Lion King movie that came out. Uh, it was on a couple of platforms. I saw it on Disney+. Plus. My thoughts about Black is King. Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize it was going to be a visual album. I think it should have been marketed as a visual album because I was expecting an actual film curated by Beyonce, and that's technically what she gave us, but in the same vein, it was... For me, it felt a bit long. No, okay, you know what? Even before we go there, let me talk about the positives. First of all, Beyonce, entertainer of the century. Beautiful gowns, beautiful looks. Everybody was on point. The the aesthetics, the, the feel, the colors, the, gra the graphics, all that shit was tight, right? Not taking away from that. Uh, Beyonce is very good at being the focal point of this conversation, uh, but not even a conversation, I guess, I mean, obviously she's the focal point of this work because she came out with the album. I like the fact that there were multiple voices. It wasn't just her. Uh, there was other artists that were represented as well. Uh, she was able to showcase not just her friends and her family, but just different looks and incorporate different faces and shades and colors of blackness into this. Super, super dope, right? Uh, for me... This is just my bias, unbiased opinion, because when it comes to Beyonce, 
though I respect her as an artist or I respect her as an entertainer, I feel that people hype her up way too much. Does she, does she deserve the hype? In some cases, yes. In this case, I think she does deserve the hype too. But I don't like putting Beyonce on a pedestal, me personally. So removing Beyonce from this, for me, I felt that Black is King was Beyonce and Friends present Africa the musical. <laughs> and I know that sounds shady, but it really isn't. It really isn't. I think, you know, I for something like this, for something to have such a cultural importance, I feel that Beyonce being the center of this takes away from the bigger picture or the bigger message that Africa has a lot of diversity in itself when it comes to expressing their culture and to showcase different levels. And, you know, you know, I think there was different elements that introduced different elements of African culture, whether it was the, the dress, the garb, the hair, um, the scenery, the settings, all these things, right? I heard that it took about a year uh, to produce the whole thing, right? Beyonce does an amazing job with that. Or, or whoever is... All the people involved. Beautiful job. Uh, so that's the positives. Those are my positives for this. Now, with every piece of work, it's going to have critique. Now, my critiques, personally, I was watching it. There was a point where it felt like it was about to be over, and it was not. It was halfway there. It was like, oh... There is more to this. And once again, I didn't know the premise that this was going to be a visual album. They said film, hour and a half. I get it. I guess. I get it. But there was a point where it kind of like, it just kept going. And I was just like, all right, this would this would have felt like a great wrapping up point. But it was just getting started. And I think my attention span, probably my attention span at that point, was not prepared for a long movie uh, or a long piece. Uh, if I, if I, once again, if I had walked in knowing like, oh, this is going to be the visual album for Beyonce's, uh, project that she put out last year or whatever time that was, that would have been, all right, let me strap in and, and let's get this started. But I, I was just walking into it like, well, most people walking into it blind, but walking into it with expectations that it was going to be one thing and it wasn't. So that's, I guess that's kind of my fault. I should have, I should have been more diligent with that but once again all props to beyonce and everyone involved in that project it was extremely dope the visuals were crazy i heard a lot of people cried at certain parts i did not but that's my bias um and yeah yeah it was a good job everyone involved uh did a good job and i like that there were some creators that were a part of the project that couldn't talk about the project until it dropped and it's really dope to see those people get their recognition. Like, yeah, you know, I worked on the hair team or I was part of the wardrobe and just seeing my name in the credits was amazing. So, you know, shout out to all those uh, creators who was able, who were able to be a part of that project. I'm pretty sure just even being able to announce that news was amazing, right? So that's that. Uh, so yeah, that's my Beyonce's King review. Uh, I would encourage everyone that can watch it to watch it. I know that there have been other people online talking about the validity of Beyonce and and her being able to display Africa in a certain way and how how someone like Beyonce can do that. I, I saw some of those critiques, but I, I, I feel in that regard, once again, it's like Beyonce presents Africa and however you want to feel about that, you feel. You know, I didn't really put Beyonce in an African frame of frame of reference. Uh, I just felt like she was presenting Africa in a very stylized, very uh, creative, very holistic, very regal way uh, in Beyonce's image uh, or Beyonce's, I guess, vision or whoever was involved. There was a vision that was carried out. So that's that's my review of Black as King. And for those of you who have not seen it, I mean, there's really no spoilers. So just see it when you can. See it if you... If you can't, I didn't rush to see it the moment it dropped, but I, I give it some time because, you know, with the internet, they usually give you everything. <laughs> they usually give you everything to begin with. So there really was no need for me to rush to see it. Uh, and then I did. It's like, oh, all these things I pretty much saw online already. So thank you, internet, for just spoiling it for the rest of us. You know what I mean?
So yeah, that's my best, that's my blackest king review. Moving on, some other fuckery happened this week, and I just want to point out a couple of things. So first things first, there was a story about a tahiri. For those of you who are not familiar with tahiri, tahiri is one of uh, Joe Budden's ex uh, relationships or entanglements or whatever you want to call it. Um, and also she's on this show called uh, Hip Hop Hip Hop Marriage Counseling. Oh gosh, I'm sorry, I'm getting that name big butchered. Uh, yeah, Hip Hop Marriage Council. Sorry, let me put on the specs and get a proper name to this. Uh, Forgive me, uh, I'm referring to uh, Tahiri, yeah, incident was, oh, marriage boot camp, yes, hip hop marriage boot camp. Now, there was a video that came out uh, with her and her man, Vado, I don't know who Vado is, allegedly he's an artist, I don't, I'm not, not too familiar with the man's and his work. But there was a video that came out of uh, Tahiri uh, talking to the host of the show. I'm going to show you guys a clip. Uh, I know, and I'm going to be giving a trigger warning that there is some level of physical abuse in this clip. So bear with me, bear with that. Uh, if you, if you want to tune away or, or log off or log back in, uh, do whatever. But I'm going to show the clip because the context... Of it is important and it goes into the bigger conversation so I'm gonna play the clip for you guys right now and then you guys um, or all of you could get an idea of what I'm talking about here so here it is and let's play it with sound on the sound of this up all right so let's play this I look crazy to y'all I look extra aggressive yo like no 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 Oh, no. Like, you lucky I don't you, yo. Are you kidding me? This house is on fire. Just do that apple on my face. Put your hands on. What the? So, right. So you just saw this Vado guy. He is... So, so here he's talking. This Vado guy t attacks her, chokes her. And you know what's crazy? I didn't hear what he said until I just played it just now. He talked about uh, her throwing an apple at him, right? But before we get into that, so this clip went out into the internet and everyone fucking lost it. Rightfully so. This man is putting his hands on a woman. And you notice how everyone else in that clip did not respond, did not react, did not jump to her defense. It was very much... Like, oh shit, that's crazy. And even I had thoughts about it. Like, just watching that clip was like... And keep in mind, there's no level of context. And I'm going to explain the context after, but there's no level of context that makes that shit okay. A man should not be putting his hands on a woman under any circumstances to that nature, right? He could have simply handled that by, by just getting up and walking away. If he went to curse her out in that moment like, yo, what the fuck? Then do that and then walk off. But he did not... He put his hands on her, and every person in that room, especially the men, just sat back like, damn, what the fuck? Yo, what? Trash. Big trash. The only person that jumped in was the host. Because someone had to jump in. The security didn't jump in. These shows have security. They didn't jump in. Any of the other male hosts on there didn't do shit. They didn't jump in either, because I guess they didn't want to get involved. None of their business. The host had to jump in. What the fuck, right? So now this this clip is circulating. Everyone is getting tight about it. And then later on, uh, another clip comes out where you see... Uh, and, he, and if you listen to the clip again, he mentions about, you know, her throwing an apple at him. So then another clip services where you see um, her attack him with an apple. Now... This clip is somewhere. I am not sure. I saw it. Uh, it's 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 crazy, and there's no 
There's not much context of why she threw the apple at dude. Um, oh, yeah. Well, here's a clip of it now. Um, it's, well, uh, the shade room. Uh, but, yeah, let's take a look at the other clip, which people started bringing up afterwards about how Tahiri attacked this guy with an apple. So let's take a look at that. This is the first time I'm seeing this clip in full. Uh, I saw a little snippet of it, but, yeah. Um, so let's give it a watch. Is she walking up? up? Is she walking you up? You don't shut up. Yeah, are you right now you would have shot me, I'm sure. Yes, 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 you would have shot me, and I would have been deserving of it. Yes, this is part of the list. What I'm about to do right now, it is part of the list. Yes. If I would have got shot right now, I would have deserved it. But you know who wasn't part of the list? Who oh. oh. me? Oh. All right. Um, Wow. I did not see that clip. I don't even know the context of that clip. Uh, yeah, I only saw, I only saw just a snippet of her throwing the apple. I had no context. I had nothing. Um, yeah, but the fact that that happened. Okay, so here's my here's my thoughts. Nobody should be putting their hands on anybody. Granted, she didn't put hands on dude. She threw an apple. A level of assault. The way he responded, still not okay. And I know a lot of men will watch that shit and like, yo, she deserved that shit. Like, yo, she threw apples at man's. Man's responded. I know, I know some of y'all niggas are going to say that shit. And I'm telling you right now, still not okay. Is she okay for doing what she did? Absolutely not. But the response, two wrongs don't make a right. This is really what it comes down to. Two wrongs, in this case, do not make a right. The, the fact that Tahiri felt the need to throw apples at him for whatever reason, I don't watch the show, so I'm only going based off of visuals and context. The fact that she decided to throw those apples at Mans, not cool. No, regardless of how she felt about him or regardless of in the moment what she was talking about with that list, I don't really know what that means. But that wasn't okay. The way he responded, still not okay. And even and even in both scenarios, you see these two people being very toxic toward each other and everyone just sitting back like, oh shit, oh shit. And it's not to even say that they're instigating, but they're bystanding and they're allowing this shit to happen and no one's checking these people based off the context of what I saw. No one is being checked. No one is being um, reprimanded. It's just like, you know, um, it's it's nuts. It's nuts the fact that, you know, both of these people allowed that shit to go down. And nobody around them said, yo, sis, yo, bro, the fuck? Nobody did anything. So, once again, you watch this clip. You watch these two clips. And it's just like, where's the accountability? And who does it fall on? And in, in cases where you have two people arguing, right, it's like, is the accountability on the person who started it that they need to be checked? Or is it the accountability on the person who decided to uh, follow up on the action in a wrong way? Are they the ones that have to be in check too? Right? I don't, I don't know. I don't know these two people personally. I don't know the full story. I don't know why... Tahiri threw an apple at dogs. I don't know why dogs decided to choke her out. They are clearly in a very toxic relationship. Very, V toxic. And they didn't handle, like, granted, I guess that's why they're on this type of show. But still, there was nobody around to say, like, yo, dogs, don't do that. Or yo, chill, bro. Like, come to the defense of anyone. It really and and keep in mind we we see this and a lot of sentiments were is like yo if he could do that in person imagine what happens behind closed doors well you could flip the script when it comes to to Harry taking the accountability too is like yo how are these two operating when there's no cameras on when there's no type of level of production right are these two just as toxic to each other behind the camera than they are in front of it. Now, yes, we could ch simply chalk it up to, um, you know, we 
people have to be accountable, communication, but communication is, it only goes so far if it's, if this is the type of ways that you're communicating, you know what I mean? Um, T has a history of being aggressive and physical. She said that. Okay. Right. So she's already acknowledged that this is the type of person she is. This Vado guy, I don't even want to say he shouldn't be surprised, but the same tune is like, all right, if you know this is the type of person that you're dealing with, and if anything, if if by, I would hope, association, if she is on this show to deal with those type of issues, then you have to know that this is something that she's working on. And be and be and be aware of that, right? And if you have issues with being physical too, then y'all both need to put that shit in check. You know what I mean? Uh, Robert's rule of order states that the man should always maintain his composure. I a thousand percent agree, right? I agree that he should have maintained his composure. My daddy says, keep your hands to yourself. Period. This is my point. You you oh you said my point exactly. Everyone keep their hands and their fruits to themselves. I'm not trying to make light of it, but Tahiri should have never threw that shit. He should have never choked her. And even on top of even on top of their issues, I I honestly truly feel that somebody should have stepped in outside of the host. I feel, like there just should have been someone to step in and, and break it up, and no one did in both scenarios. Right? So now you watch these type of shows and people think, yo, it's okay to put their hands on somebody if they feel violated. You know what I mean? Vader was bugging for doing that and specifically on camera. He was bugging. And you know what? To my, to my, you know, assertion of it, I feel that these type of reality shows are very produced. And I feel that I would not be surprised if there was some level of production to that whole stunt. I wouldn't be surprised because you've seen you've seen mad egregious shit on reality television. And the fact that that was able to fly without any type of check, like everyone just sat back way too comfortably to let that shit go off and not and anybody not say a word. I just it, and it would be very dutty if that was the case. Very fucking dutty if that was the case. The men in the room such was sitting still like that, the woman as well. It's sensationalized. How how else would you get ratings? Correct, right? It's all ratings. We have to remember this is TV, and very and very curated TV at that. This is not. It's not like this was a hidden camera shit. And even with hidden camera, you can't trust all type of hidden camera shit either. But I'm just saying, in the sense of this being a production, in the sense of ratings. Keep in mind, it happened, and now everybody is talking about it. So, if if this had played out differently, and we did not see these clips, and we did not get an idea of what was happening, and if this was real life, you know what I'm saying? In most cases, two people that are having problems in the relationship aren't necessarily wilding out with each other like that. If anything, someone gets mad, they walk away, there might be a little bit of physical altercation, but not to the extent of what we saw in those clips. And maybe, and maybe there are some couples that respond that way, but in this case, it was so out forward and open that of course, we as an audience are going to respond because it's like, how can anyone allow that shit to happen on TV? Uh, nah, those men are generally bumps on logs. I highly doubt that they would have done anything if cameras weren't rolling. You're probably right. You are probably right. All those men there look very like, damn dogs, that's nuts. That's crazy. Like they hit them with the, yo, that's crazy. And just didn't, and just didn't respond otherwise. So I can't expect much from them at this point. And, and even even outside of the talent, right? You once again there was security there that it's meant to break those things up, right? Reality show or not, produced or not, like they, that's their jobs. People get to altercations on TV. There's someone to break it up because if not, then it escalates. You know what I mean? This if this wasn't a a this wasn't a choreographed fucking fight session. You know what I mean? So I just feel that. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, if that's the way that people respond regardless of this shit being somewhat scripted or somewhat, you know, uh, produced or not, then I can't imagine what would happen if this was like some real, real shit. I can't imagine it. You know what I mean? It is just, it's just dumb. It's dumb. And once again, now that I have the context of these two clips, first of all, nobody should be putting their hands on anybody. And then on top of that, People need to start checking people when it comes to shit like this. For real. I'm talking to myself. I always do. The fact that Dr. Ish 
was the only one that moves, tells me they capitalized on a fucked up moment. Production sent him in. Well, someone had to stop it. Someone had to stop it, right? Just, I mean, regardless, I don't personally think it should have been the host, but someone had to step in and say, yo, bro, what the fuck? Because even outside of a produced segment or produced, you know, ecosystem, if, if they would have just allowed him to choke her out and everyone just sit there, that show would have been canceled. Show would have been over, right? Because the appropriate response to something like that is that someone jumps in and says, whoa, that's not okay. But if they had just let that shit fly and just let them scrap, oh no, show would have been big canceled. They, people's contracts would have been revoked, I I believe. And it should have been security because what if Vado was blacked out mad and sent that man flying? Right. Right? So, keep in mind, and and I watched the clips the first time, and I didn't hear the sentiment of him talking about she should have never threw that apple, but then I heard it just when I replayed it earlier. I was like, okay, apple. I didn't even catch that reference. And then I watched a clip of her uh, throwing the apple at man. It's like, oh, okay, I understand why he reacted that way. Not saying it was right, but I understand why he felt that he had to react that way. But either way, it wasn't okay. Either way. No one reacted when she threw the apple. No one reacted when he fucking uh, was starting to choke her out. So, every it's faults, it's faults all across the board. It's faults all across the board. And once again, if these type of situations can happen on TV, so casually produced or not, imagine what happens behind closed doors, or imagine what happens when cameras aren't rolling. It's fucked up. The current issue now is the way women are excusing Vado and blaming T solely as individuals were responsible for our actions. Yes, and this is what I was trying to say earlier, is that people will say, yo, what about her? Where's the accountability there? Oh, you know what I'm saying? She should have never. Okay, okay, yes. The answer is yes, she should have never. But once again, two wrongs don't make a right. Two wrongs don't make a right. If he, I would have... And once again, without knowing their relationship, without knowing all these things, I would have rather him curse her ass out on some, yo, fuck you, bitch, da 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 and then walk away than him putting hands on her. And if anything, people could have complained like, oh, he should have never been talking to her like that, and oh, that's fucked up. I would have rather that. I would have rather him curse her ass out or call her out of her name than him putting hands on her. Somebody throws something at me, I'm separating myself. Oh, I've been there many a time. I've been in a case where I've been slapped. I've had things thrown. I've had somebody break my property. And I did not respond in a physical response. I, I kept quiet. I kept my cool. I, I realized that whatever it was, it was not worth responding in a physical way. But some men aren't like that. You know what I'm saying? Even when I was younger, you know, I remember when... And unfortunately, I'm not too proud of this, but it just was, it just is what it was. But when I was younger, I used to get into fights with girls, not because that's what I was seeking. Um, you know, when I was a younger age, I was bullied by, I was bullied by girls, and there would be times where they mess with me, and I wanted to fight them, and I was encouraged not to. I was told, "No, man, you can't fight a girl." Da 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 da. Now, my father's philosophy was: if somebody puts hands on you, you put hands on them. Rightfully so, you're a kid, that happens. To this day, I have not ex exercised any facet of putting my hands on a woman in any type of physical, angered altercation. Now, in this case, you know what I'm saying, once again, people are going to justify, yo, she threw things, like da, da 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 Still, he could have walked away. And that's fine. She should take accountability, as should he. However, being hit by an apple versus being yoked up by a bass man, two very different things. Correct. People have been comparing the two levels of offenses too. And once again, it, it, it none of it should have happened, right? But to your point, right, being hit by an apple and being yoked up are two different things. And once again, the responses by both people could have been completely avoided or prevented. Tahiri didn't have to throw that apple. She could have, if any, even if she should have, even if, if she decided to like snuff him. All right, snuff the dude. I would have walked away as a guy. I get snuffed. My girl's upset about something may I, I may have said or whatever. She snuffs me. Cool. All right, I'll take that shit. I'll keep it pushing. But that's not what happened, right? I've had moments where my ex pissed me completely off and I put hands on, put hands and household items on him. The man kept his hands to himself. He pissed me off often and kept them every time, right? So yes, 
I, I am not here to say that people are not driven to act out physically, right? These things happen. Once again, I just said that in a relationship, I was slapped, I was hit, things were broken. So I'm, I, I get that. I understand how people are driven to that. Does it make it right? Of course not. But some people are driven to that depending on how angry they are. But I feel, but to your point, um, Trixie, and to, you know, what I'm saying is that the guy could have reacted by not responding physically. He could have just walked away. And no, it was not right for him to do so and acknowledge that. And no, I was not right for doing so and acknowledge that with him and made changes. Correct, right? And even the person that, that did those things to me physically, they acknowledged that that wasn't okay and that they would be different, right? So there, there is a level of accountability that has to come with that, right? In both parties. Even if it was a, the flip, and let's say he put hands on her first, and then she responded, he would have still had to be responsible and say, yo, that shit was a cool, I'm sorry, I'm not going to let that shit happen again. I think there may be somewhat of a, of a, of a double standard there, because, you know, when women are physical with men most in most cases men are seen as pussies right so it's like oh your, your woman's put hands on you like you a pussy nigga and when it's the flip there's like a completely egregious like yo my nigga you can't be putting hands on your girl like so i know there's some a level of double standard there but accountability is accountability no matter who you are and being being mindful of how you treat your partner regardless of how angry and upset you are needs to be checked too so, you know, the, as I said, two wrongs would make it right. And that's really what it comes down to in this situation. So, uh, yeah, I know people had their thoughts and opinions. And I'm just like, come on, y'all. Y'all need to fucking be better with this. And who, hell, who knows? These people that might have responded in a certain way could be in relationships that are mirroring, mirroring what they saw with Vado and Tahiri. And that's kind of crazy. I, that's not the type of love I want. Sorry, no no type of fucking Ike and Tino crazy shit. Um, that's not the type of shit I'm on. But once again, though this is TV, some people can actually be living that type of shit in real life where they're very physical with their partners and shit happens. I know a homegirl that used to get really physical with her mans. And I, there was times where I sat back or I heard them all going into physical altercations. I didn't step in. I feel like I should have. Now I'm thinking back on it, but I didn't want to get in the middle of their relationship. And even when I expressed it, where I was like, yo, I should have said it, stepped in and did something. She was like, no, it's okay. I got to handle it my way. Ah, it's so cringy. It's so fucking cringy. Um, I would hate to be right, but I definitely looked at each couple and felt that it might be possible. Yeah, it's definitely cringy because it's like you, and, and once again, not to say that those men shouldn't have stepped in because it's not their business. They should have. They absolutely should have. Um, my situation is just different because I was requested not to step in, but you know, as a man, you see someone you care about, you see some a, a woman that you know getting hurt. You want you would feel compelled. To... Sorry about that. Uh, I was getting a call. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, that's just really uh what that comes down to. Uh, so yeah, crazy scenario, crazy situation. Um. And we shall see what happens from there, you know? What's good? What's up? Uh, so, yeah, let's get to the next story. This this story, this next story that I'm going to pull up is pretty wild. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw this clip already, but um, there's this video of this guy who serves his woman paternity papers. Uh, I'm going to pull up the clip right now. But this shit kind of got me wild. It's a couple of minutes. I, we, I think we have time to play it for those who have not seen it. And then we can discuss. So this is the clip right here. Uh, I'm pretty sure you all have seen this already. But yeah, let's take a play and then let's talk about it. What are you doing? I'm recording. I see that. Did you put her to sleep? Yeah, I did. You did? Good. She has such a great birthday. She did. She's such a great dad. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not done passing my gifts either. Oh. A gift for me? Vernon, you don't have to do that. It's not my birthday. You're such a great mom. Oh, thank you. Oh, I had to. It's heavy. Oh, it's heavy. Ooh, I'm excited. I love it. It's so what heavy. is it? Open it up. Oh my god, you are such an amazing man, I tell you. I don't know why she's watching this like that. Day all over 
And why is she dry? I mean, I mean that's I guess that's not an appropriate Ooh, dishwashing that dress. Kind of night. Ain't it? My favorite wine. You're gonna love it. It goes with the gift. Ooh, uh -huh. it does. I can't wait to sip on this. Thank you, babe. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I'm excited. It better be the necklace I wanted. You know, I've been wanting that for a long time. Another bag. That's so tricky, I tell you. Oh, hey, you'll Ruby. See. Another bag. <laughs> I can't wait to you and your foolishness. I bet she wishes she would have never oh, opened them bags. Because. <laughs> One silly man, I tell you. Oh, yeah. Real big silly. <laughs> oh, my God. What is this? Oh, yeah. You'll see. Oh, Keep opening. Man. Duct tape, really? They ran out. I'm such a amusing person. Right? Such an amazing yeah. rapper. An envelope? What could this be? What could this what be, girl? What could this be? It's not shaking. It's not my necklace, I don't think. Oh, something's about to shake. <laughs> oh, boy. Ooh, it feels kind of thick, okay? Hold on, it may be. Maybe. This better be a ticket to Dubai for two weeks straight. Right. Because we know everyone wants to go to Dubai. Open it up. <laughs> yeah, read it. Zoom in for dramatic I effect. Just, you know what it is? I just want you to know that I know. He knows y'all. Today is not mine. She's Why? not my daughter. Why did you do this tonight, our one night? Why? Because I wanted you to know that I know the bay is not mine. I've had doubts. So I wear that DNA test. The bay is not mine. She's not my daughter. Mm. Why did you do this? She loves you, though. Why would you do this? She's not my daughter. Why would you do this? Why would you cheat? I didn't mm. cheat. Why would you cheat on me? I did it. That's proof right there. DNA test. Nevaeh is not my daughter. But babe, really? Out of all days, you had three years to give this to me. Now you want to give this to me? All right. Three Listen. years, y'all? You and Nevaeh got to the end of the month to get out of my house. You're kidding, right? I'm not kidding. But you that's your daughter. your daughter had to the end of the month to get out of my house. But that's Kelly. my daughter. It's not my daughter, Kelly. Yes, it is. Wow. The paperwork says it's not my daughter. Why would you do this? I am not the father. No. Wow. Stop, baby. Can we just talk? Get the camera out my face. Can we just talk? Wait. Can we just talk? Can we talk for a minute? Girl, I want to tell you that my daughter ain't mine. Welp. Um, this is crazy. So, so let's review. <laughs> I watched this clip and I'm just like, first of all, okay. And I, I don't mean to be mean here because it, I mean, this opens up a bigger conversation, but, uh, this shit seems scripted. Is it just me? It felt very fake. I don't know if this girl just feels very unauthentic, but it felt very produced to me. That's just, that's just my opinion. But even outside of that, <laughs> like... Um, no, cause I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, it felt very, it felt very, felt very funny to me. Not like ha 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 funny, but more like, this is how you respond, girl. This is real. Fine. Uh, the fact that she's washing dishes in that dress. I don't know how y'all girls wash the dishes. Me, I wouldn't, it's a weird one for me. Cool. Fine. Um, Yes, you did notice some cake in the clip. I'm now seeing the cake. Don't know where the cake came from. Maybe, oh, right. It was her birthday. You're right. Yes, sorry. Context clues. So, oh, yes, it's her birthday. She's dressed nice. But why is she washing dishes on her birthday? All right, that's that's the first red flag. Um. Oh, was it her? Oh, was her daughter's birthday? Girl, oh, I wasn't paying attention. Yikes. Um. All right, either way, it was someone's birthday. She's washing dishes. He presents her with a gift. Uh, he puts mad, he puts bags on top of bags on top of bags, all to serve her uh, paternity papers saying that his daughter, uh, the daughter that she has is not his. And, right, and I guess that's what she was saying. And of all days, you all do this today, y'all. Like, come on, I thought we were having fun. We just cut the cake. She just blew out her candles. How you gonna do this today? Of all days, you had three years.
to do that was a, that was actually the weirdest part to me. You had three years, like I don't. Okay, let's break this down. First and foremost, how do y'all feel about this man calling out this woman about their child? Right? Do you think men? I mean, yes, I guess men should acknowledge if a child is not theirs, but should he have gone through it this way? Was he right to do it in this way, right? I don't, I don't, this wasn't, this wasn't the way. And and I, unfortunately with social media, people feel like this is the appropriate way to call people out and call people on the bullshit. Um, it shouldn't have been filmed. Yes, um, you're right. He needed to, but it shouldn't have been filmed. Right, even outside the filming of it, um, I mean, cause yes, I don't, I agree. It shouldn't have been filmed. But on top of that, it's like, he took care of, like, it's been three years. She actually makes a good point, right? If you had, if you have had these doubts for such a long time, why would you wait until now to, to kind of bring this up? If you, if you, clearly he had some level of doubts, right? And he had some levels of doubts, uh, at some point. Why why wait until that moment? I get wanted to embarrass her the way she embarrassed him. But it wasn't it wasn't a level of nobody wants to be right about their doubts. Correct. No one wants to be right about their doubts, but there should still be a conversation, right? I mean, cause clearly the way she was responding, and I'm only going based off the context of how she was responding, there was no level of oh, you know, she had any idea or they talked about it. Or it's been doubts in the past and now he's bringing it up again. It's kind of like he kind of sat with it like, yo, this baby might not be mine. You know what? I should get a paternity test without even telling my girl that I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to come to her and expose her on my daughter's my daughter's or her daughter's birthday and say, yo, surprise. I know what you did. Yeah, that ain't my baby. I right, You cheated on me. And, and and now it's just like blindsiding this person to this. No, granted, yes, it's a confrontation. So of course you're not gonna know. Um, yes, no. Well, the daughter's birthday. That's what I meant. Not not the woman's birthday, but the daughter's birthday. But either way, it's been three years. So even as wrong as she may have been, you know what I'm saying. Um, I just feel like he had time to mull this over and and do this at an earlier date. Three years takes a long time. I'm just saying, clearly, he voices doubts. Why do this today? He tells me that they've hit on the subject before. Right, and, and but yeah, there's a double-edged sword to that statement. It's like, all right, why do this today also could equate to, you could have done this any other time. You had the three years to say something, whatever. Why would you bring it up at this particular point? Hurt people do hurtful things, and he was big in his feelings. <sighs> Now, see, unfortunately, women don't have the benefit of the doubt to say, yo, I'm presenting, um, like, I mean, he pulled a Mori on her, but then on top, I just, I don't know how to feel about this. Like, did he go about it the right way? Should she have known something triggered him? Something about t that time triggered him? Okay. My questions would be, when did he find out or when did he feel like as if that daughter wasn't his? And depending on when he felt that way, you know, how he moved about responding, I feel like that could have been calculated sooner than later. For Okay, let's throw, let's throw away the concept of time, right? Or either throw away the concept of time or add more time. What if he waited until Chick was... Until the little girl was like six, nine, ten, right? Now, is it is it less the fault of him or more the fault of him for waiting so long? Or should he have nipped it the moment he felt some level of doubt? This is what this is what I'm thinking, right? Someone said, um, either somebody got in his ear, she said something, he found something. It takes about a week or two for results, doesn't it? I don't know how long the results take. But, all right. If I'm a man and I'm taking care of my girl's daughter or I assume that I have a I have a child with somebody and that at some point I start getting doubts, even if it's a couple of years down the line, because I guess three is not a long time in the sense of a kid's life. But still, I mean, three years, I mean, we can only assume that he's been around 
for that long when it when it comes to the child, the daughter. So it was like, all right, in those three years, when could you have felt the the incentive or felt the the sentiments that oh this girl may not be mine and then on top of that once you once you kind of felt that how did you respond how did you act how did you move right because i know most i i I feel like with most men is like the moment they feel like yo they're they're taking care of a kid that's not theirs they're automatically gone right like yo i'm not taking care i'm not taking care of no other person's kid or no other nigga's kid i'm not doing it i'm out that's most men's sentiments especially when it comes to that right so my thing is when did he find out within that three year span because i refuse to believe that he found out like recently to that birthday in order to reveal it or if he did he waited to that i just something feels funny to me something feels funny you know especially i mean if she treated if she cheated on him and she had a kid outside of him then she's fucked up she's wrong and for her to not say anything that's fucked up but for him to now wait until so long to respond, I just feels a little funny too. I would feel like the moment uh, Spike makes you creative. All right, yeah. Look, he could have he could have did some type of crazy birthday big ass cake on some. He rolls a big ass cake into the living room, and everyone's like, "Oh my god, yay!" And then Maury pops out and says, "Hey, um, Shawanda, when it comes to your three year old month daughter." Uh, Kevin, you are not, he could, he could have went that route, but he didn't, right? He did not, he did not pull that. Uh, being a spiteful person makes you creative. For sure, absolutely. Now, well, spiteful, angry, upset, revengeful, all those things will make you do very dramatic stuff or very, you know, theatrical things in order to get your point across. Uh, but when it comes to this, I just feel like, yeah, I mean, as I said, some people are pointing that it felt very acted. Uh, if you're mad enough and want to hurt that person enough, then you can swallow your feelings for a bit to get what you want from the situation. I've done it. Okay, fair enough. Fair point. Uh, at the end of the day, it comes down to he waited until this moment to reveal this news, and she, she did not receive it well. It's fucked up because there's a kid involved. It's fucked up because he was not given the choice. You know what? That's I think that's what it is. I think he felt that he was not given the choice to say whether he wanted to take care of this girl's daughter or not, right? He was under the assumption that it was his daughter and he probably was taking care of her for the past couple of years. Hell, he was probably in the emergency room when she delivered the kid. He probably signed on the the, the birth certificate, did all the shit under the guise that that was his daughter and then found out that that wasn't his daughter and then went through this whole thing. So I feel like, yes, in that case, he handled it the way he did, but I didn't have to be recorded, I guess. Um, it just didn't need to be public. She just seems dramatic and spoiled. The demands and the this better bees were a lot that made the blow hit harder exactly. Yeah, um, yeah, she... she it, yeah, she seemed like she was being a little over the top with that. Um, but even just taking out the theatrics and taking out her tone and all that stuff, it comes down to her. It comes down to her, um, once again, not being truthful, right? She wasn't truthful. It's the case that she cheated on dude and had a kid outside of him and decided that... Um, hey, all right. Um, and decided that, you know, he... Um, you know, will take care of his daughter under outside of the premise that that's his that she's fucked up. But when you have family looking at your kid and questioning things, friends telling you stuff about your girl, those doubts build. Correct, absolutely, of course. You know, at, there is gonna come a time where people are gonna point things out and call out like, "Yo, dogs!" Like, I don't know, this seems kind of funny, and then get some doubts into his head, right? And the only way that you're gonna get those doubts out is by finding out the truth. And he did. And he confronted her about it. And she, like, I don't know. I didn't feel a level of remorse. Right? I think that's what makes this part even more more upsetting is that she didn't feel a level of remorse. Because her response didn't say, oh my gosh, you're wrong. It was more, why would you do this now? Right? So that makes me feel like this big guilt on her end. Um, and 
And you say, and you said, we don't know their relationship history. Perhaps she was scandalous in the past and they had to work through things. That's a good point too, right? Maybe th- there was an issue in the past. They worked through it and every, and they thought things were fine. Plot twist, it wasn't. That makes that man's voice sound like he had found some resolve, came to grips with everything, and had decided his next steps. Yes, he seemed very. Cal- this was very calculated. This was not just like, oh, I'm acting out of rage. This was calculated. He had his doubts. He found out the truth. He said, "All right, dope. I know the truth. Now I'm going to present it to you in this very flashy way." Right? He didn't sound like, "Yo, I just can't believe you." Was just like, "Yo, look, you cheated. You're you." You fucked up. You fucked up. You cheated on me. That's not my kid. It was very matter of factly. So you can already tell that he was in a space where he already accepted what it was and he just wanted her to know, like, he knows exactly what he said in the video. Like, yo, I know. Right? Hell yeah. She would have said anything to to avoid owning up and apologizing. Right. So it was like, it's not to say that she said, oh no, you're completely wrong. That's not true at all. You know, that test means nothing. It's like, she already been called out. And I was like, oh, You could have done this any other time. You could have stopped rolling. No, why would you even record this? You could have mentioned this a while back or why'd you wait until three years from now? So she big guilty. She big guilty. And we don't see these type of stories enough, obviously. We don't see stories where a woman may lie on a guy when it comes to a child. But these are the types of scenarios, despite how dramatic this came off, that happen, right? And how do you handle those things? We don't know. But he handled it the way that he felt he needed to. And at the end of the day, it was fucked up for her to to not give him the option to say whether he wanted to take care of that kid or not. Or whether he should have been responsible for taking care of that child uh, or not. Right? She didn't give him that choice. And if if they were in a relationship and she had been truthful to say, yo, you know, you might not like this, but I'm having a kid with... So it's funny. It's it's just like the it's just like the story that we talked about last time. Um, the story with the guy who had a child with some other woman, and the wife like, the the wife uh received his child that he had with a side chick. Like there was a convers there was a, some level of communication, and the wife accepted the fact that he had a kid with someone else, and that she incorporated the kid into their family. This didn't happen here. It wasn't like. Hey, hey, man, or hey, hey, boo, you know, I just want to let you know that I had a child with somebody else, and, you know, I know this is not your baby, but, you know, I would love for you to be there in this child's life for the sake of me and the relationship, right? And who knows, maybe there is a bias or a double standard in this, right? Because you have two scenarios that are very similar, well, well, very similar, but very different, right? It's like, there's a difference because... Uh, in the past scenario of talking about the guy who introduced his wife to his side chick's baby, she was pregnant. She was expecting on herself, right? And she decided after a conversation that they had that things happen, but at the end of the day, a child's involved. In this scenario, it's man's did not know that his girl, his girl's daughter was his. He found out that it wasn't, and then he confronted her. So it was a little different, but you can see how... At the end of the day, a child is involved in how these two people um, handled it differently. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, we do. That's how Maury and Jerry stay in business with the drama, yeah. And now there's a whole show called Paternity Court. I actually heard of Paternity Court. Uh, but that goes back to my whole point. Give people the ability to choose what they put up with. Correct. And that's literally the the moral of the story. Uh, and I, and it's, a, it's, it's honestly a lesson that I have to learn. That I have to give, that you have to give people the choice, no matter how bad or crazy the news is, to accept it the way that they do and respond accordingly. And if you take away that choice from people, then of course they're going to be mad. Nobody likes the choices being taken away from me, from themselves. So give people the choice and let them decide what they should or shouldn't or what they want to or what they don't want to deal with. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, so yeah. That's that's the gist of everything that I had to talk about today. Oh, yes. Also, um, I'm going to wrap up the live soon. But also as a reminder, or not really a reminder, but to let you all know, um, 
and stop using kids as Velcro. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Do not do that. Don't use it. A lot of people do, and it's fucked up. Don't use your kids as Velcro. It's not, it's not okay. Just because you're too lazy to tie your, your sneakers. Um, they were not made to keep nobody. Yeah, people try to use kids as, as a level of, of, of locking somebody into your life or locking them in because there's an obligation, but you can't do that. You can't use kids as a measure of, of maintaining a relationship, no matter how, how it turns out. It's fucked up. They aren't pawns and tools. They aren't pawns or tools. You're absolutely right, my dear. But yes, I want to remind you all, or want to tell you all about uh, an affiliate partner that we have for the podcast called Urban Impulse, right? So if you go to urbanimpulse.com slash shop and you enter the code SIPOD10, that's S-I-P-O-D-10, you can get 10% off of your order for all the products that they have on there. They have hoodies, they have mugs, they have clothing, they have a lot of bunch of stuff on that site. So go over there, check it out. That's SIPOD10 uh, at urbanimpulse.com slash shop. You can get your discount there and check out all these things. And I have... Some more, just uh, some more affiliate partners that are going to be presented soon, uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, and yeah, uh, it's just dope. It's dope that how all those things are happening, um, because clearly there are people who don't stay even when the kids are there. So yes, yes. Just going back to the conversation. Yeah, um, kids get involved and they don't stay. So don't fuck yourself over by introducing kids as an element to trap someone into a relationship that they don't want to be in happens every day b but yes all that to say uh going back to the affiliates uh yeah more affiliates to come um just make sure to check those out uh once again tickets to the live show are available uh they are free so make sure to cop yours it's happening on november sorry september 5th uh this year 2020 uh, it's going to be a Zoom show, so you could do it. Uh, you could log in or you could uh, get ready virtually. I'm coming out. I still have a lot more planning to do. I have to talk to some um, people that I want as guests and set things up. But, you know, it's going to be a dope time. And I'm really happy that the podcast has gotten to this point uh, and that I am now the official host. And that, uh, yeah, we are making things rock. I'm working hard. I'm really putting a lot of energy into the pod these days, so I'm just happy that I'm able to give back to the listeners, because y'all deserve. My slow boat was trying to log in yesterday. <laughs> no, it's fine. That's all right. Uh, yeah, nah, but yeah, the, um, I mean, it's good. It's good. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you saying that. You're proud. Yeah, I'm proud of me, too. I, I, I You know, especially with quarantine, especially with everything that's happening, it is, I, I felt it kind of hard to, like, really get my hands into something that I'm excited about. So uh, doing everything with the pod and doing everything with the show has really got me excited, has really got me um, motivated. So I'm happy. Um, I'm happy that this is something I could uh, dive myself into. So anyway, once again, uh, this live is about to wrap up, but thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, Make sure to follow the podcast on all the podcast platforms. Uh, Follow it on SoundCloud and Spotify and Apple Podcast. And if you have any questions for the podcast, please email S O P H I G podcast at gmail.com. Ask questions, ask any level of advice. I want to give people advice. So please uh, send your emails and questions there. Also, um, follow the podcast on Twitter and on IG. Obviously, you're watching it now, so you're already following on IG, but follow on Twitter as well. And there's going to be more episodes coming up uh, before the live show and afterwards. So, yeah. Uh, I am... Well, you you joined just in the nick of time because I'm about to end. <laughs> so, so uh, thank you so much for joining. But I'm, I'm about to be off this right now. Uh, and, yeah. Thank you guys for watching another live. And I'll catch you all next week. All right? So, check you all later. Why did I blow a kiss on you all? This is weird. Don't do that. I'll take my kiss back. (laughs) Take it back. Uh, Anyway, all right. I'll check you out next time. Peace out.